Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And we are here to talk about last week's game, talk about this week's game, and probably talk about some other stuff, too. Yeah, uh, right, we have a Brysometer on confidence, how we're feeling about him to, now that two weeks, I feel like he's put together two solid weeks and just kind of get out there and feel where we're, we're, what we see and what we feel is going on with him. He's put together a solid four, maybe five quarters over the last couple of weeks, I yeah. would say. Like I mean, a really, really, mm, I wouldn't say elite, but what we were hoping to see correct. this time of the year, right? We were hoping to see this type of play this this time of year. Uh, and I would say outside of the first quarter last week and then and really kind of the fourth the ball quarter. Did he that much last week in the first quarter? That's what I was thinking back. He made some bad throws early. He, he made, he made a a several bad. bad throws early. Over, overshot a couple of guys. A um, couple times he rushed throws he didn't need to. But he, he got comfortable. I mean, let's just go ahead and talk about last week's game. He got comfortable against the Packers, and he looked good. He looked really good. He was making great throws, like those a couple of throws of DJ Chark on the sideline, yeah. and then the other one in the end zone. Those were great throws. He was throwing guys open. He was yeah. he was making the right read, making the good, accurate throws to get them in stride. Something we haven't seen this offense do, right before. <clears throat> I was looking at his throw chart. And he only had one attempt past 20 yards, but he had a lot between like 15 and 20 yards um, and, and between 10 and 20 yards specifically. And he completed a lot of passes and a, many of them were sideline passes, which is something mm -hmm. that, you know, we, you and I have talked about uh, that he's not been super accurate on so far this season. Um, he, he looked strong. He looked good. And if this is a preview of what we can expect with, you know, a full off season behind him, weight training, footwork fixes, a better you know, offensive like scheme for him. Right. A, a, right. A scheme kind of built around his strengths. Then I think we're in good shape. I do too. Uh, uh, we're talking about last week's game. Last week we got the Panthers were screwed by the refs. I, I Oh yeah. I, yeah. They had other opportunities to win it. But that big play down the field by uh, Jordan Love through to, I think it was Dobbs. Dobbs, yeah. yeah. I mean, sideline. first of all, he didn't catch it. Second of all, the play should have never happened. There were zero yeah. seconds left on the clock. Yeah, on the play clock. Yeah, he they, they snapped it very plainly. The ball was still in the center's hand. Yeah. It, on the ground with zero seconds. But But even still, they reviewed it. They yeah, reviewed the you, catch. How do you do that? It was very clearly, the ball was very clearly on the ground, not secured by his left hand, which it was the official explanation. That hand was not underneath that ball No, the at ball all. was on his side. He was bobbling the ball as he was going out of bounds. I mean, there were, you could have called that incomplete three different ways, yet they called it complete, and, and there, was, there was no evidence that ball was complete. No, I, I, <laughs> fans on Twitter of the Packers were saying he had two feet down, they, but he didn't control the ball. All the exactly, way through. exactly. And even if he had the two feet down, he was falling. He wasn't walking, right? He was yeah. falling out of bounds. You have to complete the catch you, through the ground. That is the rule. And he did not. So uh, uh, kind of a, a really nice comeback by Bryce, a really nice job by the offense that uh, sort of wasted like yeah, you know we'll remember it for the good you know yeah. positive things that we saw but should be should have been a win a hundred percent should have been a win I or at felt, least it gone into overtime uh, i right? felt like three minutes the way our offense was clicking at that point was gonna get oh easily i mean we had almost got in field goal range on that last second i yeah, I agree the, with the refs on that. I thought it was at zero. I don't, I don't think it looked like it. it yeah, I'm it not was, gonna argue and that. they had wasted a, they had kind of wasted some time earlier 
you know, in that drive, um, that I think they had wasted 15, 20 seconds by huddling up and just not, not moving fast enough. And then they, you know, got to the point to where one second really mattered. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately they didn't have it, but yeah, that, that I didn't really have much of a problem with. Um, I actually thought they got down there really fast Yeah, and, uh, did a good job of making it even that close. And there was also we, that horrible pass interfere, or sorry, uh, roughing the passer mm-hmm, yep. that was nowhere near roughing the passer, and that came on the first down that led to a score. And I think it was a third down incompletion too that they got. Well, you got the Packers Sunday night football this week uh, in a must-win game that wouldn't be a must-win game had they lost this one. So you know the NFL did what they needed to do, I guess, but. Uh, rough one, rough, uh, yeah. rough one. Lots of good things though. I mean, the DJ Chark, hello, welcome to the season. Like, thank you for showing up finally. Right. This is what I expected from him from day right. one. Like, what yeah. happened? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if if. I mean, this is what we saw in training camp. Yeah. Like they, we saw the connection early, and they just haven't found each other in games. You know, he and Bryce, but they found each other last week and I hope that they find each other again this week and you know if, if you could put together a couple more games like this between those two guys I wouldn't mind having Chark back again I was gonna season. ask you that I, I know this is premature but hypothetically if DJ Shark mm-hmm. comes back next two games has you know five receptions 80 yards average you know maybe a yeah. touchdown for one of the two games yeah do you I would say bring him back with Thielen um, Tommy yeah. Trimble is finally starting to show something. Tommy Trimble, I was going to talk about him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would say, yeah, with, with DJ, I mean, I, I don't know that I'd give him $10 million again, which I, I think is what we gave him this year. But I would bring him back, you know, two-year, $12 million deal, two fifteen, something like that. I mean, just a It know, could be a two twenty two with... 22 out, right? with- a lot of escalators, but it's essentially a two. Yeah, maybe 15, like 16. a lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, incentives um, would be fine. But yeah, I, I was excited to see that because, like you said, that's what we had been expecting from him mm-hmm. this season. You know, getting open. Uh, he's been healthy. He's been healthy most of the season. Yeah. yeah, a little banged up early, but he's been that. That was the, the my big fear was that we would just lose him five, six games into the season for the rest of the year because that's kind of been his M.O. Yeah. But he's stayed healthy. Maybe he's just not been used much and he hasn't had an opportunity to get hurt. But uh, I did like seeing what what we saw from him uh, last can I, week. I, I just want to give a round of applause to Thomas Brown. This is what, his third game that he's actually had control of this offense, third or mm-hmm. fourth game, and you could see the improvement of the offense. Like... Yeah. It's it's not so vanilla. It is working the strengths of the players. Bryce Young is under center more, forcing the ball to be ran. I mean, that's that's what we wanted, or at least I wanted. I wanted us yeah. more even, and now it seems like we're finally getting there. And I'm I'm happy with this that. week at least, right? This week at least. I mean, you can definitely see since Reich I, has I, been gone. I'm talking about production wise. I'm talking about production wise. Like you can see since Reich's been gone. Like you said, the play calling has been very different. Under center, a lot more. Uh, rolling out a lot more. Play action, a lot more. Uh, Scoring-wise, it hasn't been there really until last week. And we'll have to see. It was that because we played a Packers defense that's sort of reeling. Not yeah. a good defense. Uh, not a well-coached defense. So, you know, we've got Jacksonville this week, which is, I think, going to be a little stronger of a test, although there's not a great defense either. So, uh, which is fine. Like, give give Bryce some, you know, uh, defenses that they can score on and give him some confidence going into the offseason. I'd I'd love that. But I want to talk about Trimble real quick. Uh, He, when he has the ball, when he gets the ball, he can do some things. Right, like he mm-hmm. can make some guys miss, he can hit some guys. Um, he seems to catch the ball pretty well. I think he's got decent hands. I'd like to see him more involved. Uh, you know, I 
I, Hayden Hurst, I guess, will be back next year. I mean, I, I don't think we can get out of that contract yet, but I forgot give me Tommy that Trimble. guy was on our team, to be honest <laughs> I with know, you. I know. <laughs> But give me Tommy Trimble, you know, a Tommy Trimble Hayden Hurst combo with Trimble being the lead guy. I mean, I could see Tommy Trimble being a 600 yard receiver if he can do this every week or yeah, every I mean, other week. The, his stat line is perfect. What I would like to see a tight end. If mm-hmm. you're not Greg Olson, if you're not the main number one, right. Uh, right. Four for 59. And that's, that's really nice out of six yeah. targets. Had a so, couple of nice blocks too. Yeah. Like that, he's, that a, noticed, he's a good so. blocker. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't watch block. Ooh. Right. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard he was a good blocker. Uh, at least that was what he was when he came into the league uh, you know, out of college. But I haven't really seen it honestly that much on tape. But everybody seemed to be really gelling on offense this week and or last week, and it was nice to see. It was a fun game to watch. You know, one of those games that came down to the final seconds, which we haven't seen a ton of this year with you know, Panthers in position to possibly win a game. So it was fun to see, and I hope we see it again this week. Yeah, a uh, quick quick shout out on defense. Frankie Louvu had one sack, one tack for loss. Derek yeah. Brown had a good good game there. Other than that, it, it wasn't that impressive on defense. I mean, they ran no. the ball well on us. Um yeah, I, I thought J.C. Horn is, had a good game. Uh, it feels bad that the <clears throat> offense made that comeback, but the defense kind of was the one who let it down. Yeah, a bit of a role reversal this week. But uh, Frankie Louvu, man, they better find a way to bring him back. You have to. He's the heart of the that, defense. What a massive loss that will be if he's not not you know not back next I, year. I think you have to do it for future free agency, anyways. Because you have a guy that signed a what three year deal to come back, come here, be a special teamer, and a guy who could get your ch- hey, come here, work it out. We can give you your chance. He got yeah. his chance. He took it. He ran with it. I think you sign one of those guys to that big deal just because yeah. he has become the heart, and you see, he has earned it. Yeah, and the other guys in the locker room know that. Other guys in the league know that, and if right. you don't give it to him that wants to say that another guy's not going to come in. Because look at Hassan Reddick. He came here on that one-year deal. Mm-hmm. He looked really good. We didn't pay him that. Philly paid him decent money, not not outstanding. I think what we saw, we were like, oh, we should have done that. Right, yeah, for sure. Well, I think he got like $15 million a year or something, right? Like, I, wasn't wasn't crazy. Certainly not what Brian Burns... Yeah, who's, $15 million. Yeah, Brian Burns is... It, you know, sort of disappeared this year. Um, <clears throat> yeah, bring back Frankie for sure. I mean, if we get Hassan Reddick back, let's get him back too. I mean, I don't know <laughs> what, uh, what his what his deal looks like, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's unfortunate. I, you know, the Panthers lost again. I think us and the Cardinals are now the only two realistic teams to get that number one pick. And unfortunately, that pick is going to go to Chicago if it's the Panthers. So, just real unfortunate there. But uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey, everybody, you know, got to root for the team, if for no other reason than to prevent Chicago from getting that number one pick. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. Screw those guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, any other kind of thoughts on the games? I, I mean, we're not going to go into like a full. Nah. Full breakdown uh, recap mode, but uh, glad to see the you know offense clicking again, and or really for the first time this year. I mean, that was our first game in forever that we've scored over twenty points. Yeah, and the first time we've scored, I think the first time we scored thirty this yeah. year, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so let's do it again. I want to see that. I want to see more. <laughs> yeah, uh, we yeah. do have some. Uh, Panthers news, not too much, but Julius Peppers is a finalist for the Hall of Fame. J. Yeah, he will definitely be a first ballot inductee for sure. I, th- right? I think he's almost certain to be it. I yeah. mean, there's some good players on there, um, but I just, I, how do you hold him back? I, he's one of the best sack leaders of all time. You can't, you can't hold him back. Um, I had a list of 
all the guys. Yeah. So just kind of looking at other defensive ends, I mean, you got Jared Allen. I mean, he's not getting in over Peps. J uh, Pep. Dwight Freeney. I not could getting see in over J Pep. Maybe. Not getting in over, not over Julius Peppers, though. And I think that's it in terms of defensive ends. Yeah. I mean, he's by far the best of those. That group, but I mean, Peppers, what he's fifth all time in sacks. I mean, he's that's a Hall of Fame career if I've ever seen one. Yeah, yeah, he's multiple did it, awards, he, multiple teams. He did it too, right? Right, and then he even had you know this final swan song with us where he still he was had a force, sex. right? Nine he sex was still up. a force, <laughs> yeah, still, I mean, still a very an impactful player. We, we have our big time <clears throat> pass rusher. Have seven sacks right now, and he has an extra game. Yeah, I mean, who as Burns? Yeah, I think he's got six, right? He's at seven. Is he at seven? I thought he was at seven. Okay. Well, now now you're gonna make me check this. I think he's at six. Yeah, I think he got two in the first game, and then I think he's only gotten four since then. Jerry's googling. Uh, I was on PFF and it didn't want to give it quickly to me. Yeah, PFF, come on, get your website in order, man. It's so hard for me to find things on PFF. Like, yes, like (laughs) it is not a user friendly. It's so hard to find just basic stuff. I mean, I know that they're you know they're it's not uh, built for that, but still can make it a little easier. He has. You're right. Only six sacks and one sack in his last. Five games. Yeah. He's been, he is not, I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't want to be here. I, I know it's hard, right? This year, you're yeah. two and 12, two and 13, whatever we are now. You know, I know it's hard to keep up that motivation and keep that motor high, but other guys are doing it. Yeah. You know, look at Luvu. Like, he's not quitting. Derek Brown. I mean, Derek Brown. The guy plays quitting. right next to him and, he he's having a heck of a year. I know it's not one of yep. those fancy great stat years. And but, it's never gonna be with him. But he's but you can see the impact. Watch you him. see him yeah. jumping up and batting the balls. You can see yeah. him making a play. I mean watch other him. coaches Just watch it. him play. He's awesome. Yeah. Like other coaches notice. Did you see the Green Bay Packers uh uh coach come up to him after the game? Oh uh uh-uh. Oh yeah, he was like, Man. Yeah. You keep doing that. Wow. That's what he said. Yeah. Just about that game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you know, DB's been great this year. But, uh, you know, JC Horn. JC Horn could have, he could have sat out the rest of the season. He didn't have to come back. He didn't have to yeah. come back and play. But he's out there and he's playing well and giving it his all. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's an effort thing with Burns. I don't know if it's not having anybody opposite him and, you know, but it doesn't look like he's getting double teamed every play. No, he's just, I don't know. I just, I see him a lot where it just doesn't look like he's given everything he has. And that's not a guy that you're going to pay thirty million, twenty million dollars to, you know, over four or five years, whatever it's going to be like, you're just not going to do that. You I, shouldn't I, do that. I really do feel like he's cost himself money this year. I hope he has. I mean, I can't imagine that we you would give him thirty million dollars now, right? He's no. he's shown that he can't be a he's he's not a consistent twelve to fifteen sack guy. He's just not that guy. He got in double digits one time in his career. You know, you don't pay somebody like that that much money. I'm sorry. I like Brian Burns, <laughs> but this was a news on Julius Peppers. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, Steve Smith did not make. The final 15 receivers who did Reggie Wayne, Andre Johnson, Tory Holt. It's just that so, backlog. I mean, yeah, I, I don't I mean, see any of those guys not being Hall of Famers. Well, I mean, Wayne 2014 retired, he's still not in. Johnson 2014 retired, he's still not in. Tory Holt 2008 retired, he's still not in. Is this the last year that Tory Holt? No, I'm sorry, 2009, he was with the Jags. But I think it's 15 years, right? And then you uh, you have to go through to the Veterans Committee or something. 
Oh, I have no clue. You, so, are, you are talking way over my head on Hall of Fame stuff because I never pay attention to that crap. I'm just saying, like, it, it is now, like, I thought it was, you know, like 80% that Steve Smith would eventually get in. Now I think it's less than 50%. I, 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 think I don't it's know why possible they he just don't want to move on. Like, look at Torrey Holt's numbers, man. If you really want to look toward, because I thought, yeah. oh, Torrey Holt, yeah, he's he's probably the low man on that totem pole. You look at no. his stats, <laughs> they're impressive. Yeah. And then you look at Andre Johnson, who was probably the best receiver for certainly two, a few years. years. Yeah. yeah. It's same with Reggie Wayne. Like, Reggie Wayne's stats are most similar to Steve Smith's, but Reggie Wayne has a Super Bowl. Yep. And that's, uh, and Reggie Wayne's still not in. And so. Reggie Wayne has a Peyton Manning rub. Yeah. Which could hold him back or do help him. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, it's it's helping him more than it's helping Steve Smith because he's at least a finalist. But I'll be very interested to see if one of these wide receivers get in, particularly Torrey Holt, given that he's been now eligible for, you know, going on 14, 15 years. So let's keep an eye on that for, uh, you know, Steve Smith Hall of Fame watch. But all right. Uh, no other news, really? That I could find. No, I don't think uh, Eddie P did not win special teams player of the week <laughs> this week, unfortunately. Can't make a extra point. That guy. Yeah. Knock in 50 yarders all day, but can't make an extra point. I think he's missed three or four this year, they said. So, unfortunate. But those are the ones you got to get. Those are the easy ones. All right. Uh, what else before we get into the preview? Uh, we have the Brysometer. Basically, I was kind of getting here. Get your confidence level of Bryce Young, where he's sitting after. Because I know after that, what, two games ago, yeah. or three games <clears throat> ago, whatever it was, where he was just missing throw after throw. He looked awful. He looked confused. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, Thomas Brown's second game at, yeah. by himself, without Frank Reich here. After the two showings he's had, how do, how are you feeling about Bryce Young? Definitely up, right? The the mm -hmm. stock is definitely going up. I don't know if we're putting a like a number value on this or uh, what, uh it, what do we do? Whiskers, go, like, what, you what know, we, the, the whisker scale or something. Yeah, let's do a whisker scale. I like the whisker scale. <laughs> like a uh, zero out of five whiskers or something. We'll do ten whiskers. Ten whiskers. Five okay. on I'm, each I'm side. sitting at like I'm sitting at like six whiskers right now. I think, which is up from maybe three or four a couple of weeks ago. I want to see it for a whole game. Uh, and I want to see it against not, you know, considered one of the worst defenses in the league. But he made some throws that I wasn't sure he could make last week. And he made them look good. So definitely confidence is up. You know, we're still... We're still not, you know, as high as I'd like to be. Oh yeah. But it's one game, really. That you know, he did this for, but put up thirty points in one game, three hundred yards, one game, a couple of touchdowns, one game. But that's where I am. Where are you? I'm actually right at the same six. I was probably okay. about a three before that. Yeah. Two games ago, you know. Um, one thing I do, why I am so much higher is I feel like Thomas Brown, I, I keep going back. The scheme has changed and mm. we're seeing him operate in a different system that works with him. Now, mm. yes, it was three games in when it finally started clicking, but you got to understand these guys were running a completely different offense for all year. Thomas Brown's not going to be able to flip a switch and completely turn over a playbook. That's just not going to happen. And I feel like yeah. he's slowly incorporating it. Amir Smith Marset is a good example of how, mm. hey, I'm going to try some do different things. He didn't use them as much last week, but I do feel like it's helping Bryce out. It is, he's working with Bryce's strengths. And I'm really excited to see this week how he operates, especially going up against a good pass rushing and a good, decent secondary in Jacksonville. Yeah. We, we said when Reich left that the that you know things weren't going to change immediately that mm -hmm. it was going to be two three four games before we really saw uh, significant differences right and that has borne out 
now that we've seen how good Bryce, you know, can be, I need to see it two games in a row. I want to see it two games in a row. I want to see it three games in a row, right? I want to see every game from now to the end of the season. I expect Bryce Young to be over 250 passing yards, a couple of touchdowns, right? I think that's, I think that's the minimum I would want to see to go into the off season really, really excited and confident, right? And have the whisker scale maybe up to like seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, the only question would be if he could get, get clean. If everyone can keep him clean, That that is the big question. Yeah. I mean, offensive line play has looked better Yeah, since Reich left. Uh, you know, they certainly seem to have switched to more of a power blocking scheme. Which they desperately uh, needed. Right. I mean, that's what this, this, what, that's what these guys were successful at last year. <laughs> Did you know that Chuba Hubbard is like 220 yards away from a thousand yards? I did because you just texted me that before we recorded, but I did not yeah. know that before that. <laughs> and he, he has five or six games with under 10 carries. I mean, very similar to Deontay Foreman last year, right? Mm -hmm. Just he doesn't have the huge games that Deontay had a couple of really big games last year. But Chuba has been pr very consistent over the last five, six, seven weeks of just putting up good, good numbers, right? Moving the ball. It, it, his, 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 I think his average is like 3.8 yards this year, which is not great. But, you know, he's not getting a lot of negative yardage. He's always moving the ball forward. Yeah, it's it's crazy that this happened to this team two years in a row. Yeah. Where basically the first head coach is completely lost, doesn't understand how to work, and all of a sudden the interim coach comes in. They're like, hey, let's just smash mouth the ball. We have these big guys who are power blockers. Let's use them. Let's use our running backs. And then it frees up our quarterback. Simplify. And they simplify things. To the point to where it's you're not overthinking what you're doing. There's not overcomplication in the plays, the the calls, the schemes, especially for a rookie quarterback, right? Like <laughs> this is the way it should have been all along. Reich Reich should have come in, seen the players that are on this team, seen their skill sets. Yeah, maybe add a couple of your own guys. Right to sure. to bring in to mix things up a little bit, but you should have gone with the power blocking scheme at minimum, right? Especially with you don't with you don't have to run the ball for yeah you don't have to run the ball forty times a game, but that blocking scheme works, right? Put block Bryce under center. Do some of these things that make the game easier for a rookie quarterback. You're still not going to win ten games. You just don't have the talent for it. But, you know, and the next offseason, you bring in a couple of offensive linemen. Maybe that's when you switch it up, right? You play to your skill, skill sets. That's what, that's what good coaches do. It, it amazes me that we've had two coaches that don't seem to understand that. And yeah. they're, they're head coaches. I'm sure we could go out there to some high school coaches and that you tell them that and be like, let's look at this guy. Let's see what's going on. They'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, granted, right. they're all NFL players who are super talented, but. Sure. But, you know, and, and you eventually bring the guys in that fit your scheme. And then you switch, right? Or you slowly integrate it in as you go. And then suddenly your scheme is what it is. And you're hopefully being successful. But Reich came in and tried to run his scheme straight out of the box with a rookie quarterback and players that didn't fit and he got fired in his first season and 100% yeah. his fault. 100%. Just not smart. And with that being said, I also hope David Tepper takes note. Yeah. Because he needs to take note that these guys who come in with these flashy offenses and stuff like that, if they're not willing to change it up or if David Tepper himself is like, I want more passing. I want, you know, run and gun fun stuff. N no, yeah. you, well, you can't just yeah. say that you need to build a team to be that. 
Yeah, and there was a report out that said David Tepper had had sort of come, I guess, was taking a lot of accountability and was promising to be better, you know, uh, internally. This is what is being said. I hope it's true. Who knows? It could just be, hey, put this out there so we're not scaring Ben Johnson away, right? That could very well be it. But I hope that it is true because – one of the first questions that should be asked of the new head coach is, are you going to come in here and try to force your system down our throats? Mm-hmm. Or are you adaptable? What What are you doing in the second half? What are you looking at at halftime? What are you going to do when you come in here and you see these? this is the team? How can you make this team successful? What are you going to do? in subsequent off seasons to build the strength of this team. But coming in now, are you going to, are we going to be one in 16? Because if that's the case, then maybe we need to go somewhere else or we need to prepare our fans for it. Yeah. Right. And and if you're a coach, you walk in and you look at David Tepper and say, I've heard some horrible things about you trying to run. Mm -hmm. I want to be the coach. I need, I need a personnel guy who, who does the scouts. Yeah. I don't need you coming in and your wife making picks. I don't need your wife overlooking the offensive line coaches making suggestions. I need my guys, my coaches give us two, three years. You know, we have to build it up. This roster's not perfect, but I don't need you in my ear. I don't need you to micromanage this team. Give me two, three years, and if I'm not doing it, then, then that's different. If I have to yeah. turn this around. And if I'm Ben Johnson specifically, if I'm Ben Johnson specifically, I'm coming in knowing that this job is mine if I want it. So I'm going to be interviewing you, David. Exactly. Tepper, right? Like <laughs> I'm going to be seeing what can you do for me to make me successful. What are you not going to do to make me unsuccessful? Like, I want to know these things because the word on the street and everything we've seen is that Ben Johnson would have been the guy last year and will be the guy this year if he wants it. Uh, Yeah, but you got the Chargers gig, which is sunny Mm -hmm. California. I mean, With with a quarterback who is proven to be very good. With a good roster. I mean, cap. Good offense, especially offensive, great roster. Cap, and good defensive players too. Cap issues, but you know, you could work True. that out. Um, Every team has them. You're gonna have Arizona, who's gonna get Drake May or uh, Caleb Williams, right? They have some weapons. New- Same with New England. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know if you want to follow up Bill Belichick. If you want to move to, you know, the Northeast, but yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> that's I don't a supportive. I'm... That's a very supportive ownership, and a very very rabid fan base that. You know, you could do worse. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Minnesota could be open. Like, there's a lot of potential teams that have high powered offensive players. I don't, you know, the bad, the thing about the Chargers is like, would you want to go there and knowing that you're not going to have any fans in the stadium? <laughs> like, that's a major thing. It to really me, that is. would be a major thing. Well, not only that, the history of the Spanos family, who's the owners, right. are notoriously cheap. Right. Notor- Actually, you know what? Screw, scratch that. Ben Johnson's not going to go there because Tepper's going to back up a Brinks truck and say $10 million and Spanos will balk at that. Now, Yeah, you know, that's not that, that's a good point. I, didn't, I did not think of that. That's a good point. Like, yeah, that $15 million might not be realistic but eight million and spanos would be like two three what are you talking about yeah you're you've never been a head coach before i'm gonna pay you this much money this is why the chargers don't get the high-powered coaches no they get the guys like brandon staley and you know who the guy before him that i can never remember his name anthony Uh, uh Oh, I can't think of it. It's Anthony yeah. Lynn. Is that it? Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. He was there for a couple seasons, right? Two yeah, and a half, been... maybe. Yeah. A few. Um, Anthony Lynn, 55 years old. Yeah. 55 years old. Yeah. 
That's got to be him. <laughs> That's got to be that, that guy. I, I mean, his picture him. does have a... <laughs> have a yeah, because I don't think he's got a job. Else as no, the he's currently with the. Uh, I don't know. He his Montreal Alouettes. He was also interim play, coach of the Buffalo Bills. Mm. Uh, he is currently the San Francisco 49ers assistant head coach. Oh, okay. And Detroit Lions, he was in 2021 offensive coordinator. Okay. So, we'll be right back. And we are back. Thanks, Zoom, for cutting right. us off. <laughs> yeah, one day we're going to make enough money to where we can afford to use... Oh, I wonder if you could use a cracked version of Zoom. I think we've talked about this before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to the three to four people still listening, thank you for, for continuing on with us today. Uh, we are going to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be Trevor Lawrence. Could be beat hard. I think uh, it's not a hundred percent. Beat yet. hard? The, it, it, is it beat hard? Like yeah, beat hard. I call him beat hard. It's Bethard. Okay, I was like, how? Are I you call him beat hard. <laughs> I mean, that's how it's spelled, right? It's yeah. It is beat hard if you put a space there. Bethard. That's what. Okay. Anyways, it's let's CJ move on. Bethard. Yeah. So it could be, uh, could be him. Could be Trevor. Yeah. Trevor has not practiced, so uh, we'll see. But moving, we got on. a game coming up, Jerry. Yes. Uh, betting odds here. Panthers are six point underdogs. Uh, over under is thirty six and a or thirty seven and a half. Uh, this game's at one o'clock in Jacksonville. Yeah, I'm not Good. surprised at either one of those, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm Vegas is obviously not sold that the Panthers are going to oh. be able to score points multiple weeks in a row. Uh, the over under feels a little low to me. If you believe that they have figured something out, I think that that's probably an easy bet. If you feel if you truly feel that way, uh, I could easily see this game being both teams in the twenties. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's crazy. Um. All right, let's look at. Oh, do you have any trivia? I have no trivia. All right, all right. You should have. Did kept... you know that the Panthers and Jaguars entered the league the exact same year? Yes, I did. Do you feel? Before we get into this, do you feel like there's? Do you feel a rivalry with Jacksonville? Maybe at the beginning. Now I don't. I kind of like Jacksonville now. <laughs> like they're they're like that. <clears throat> brother that was like your little brother right yeah they kind of feel like a little brother and they probably yeah, feel the same about too. us like we're the little guy a brother i think i think there should be a rivalry you know we, we came into the league at the same time we both had various levels of success mm -hmm. both had fairly early success right yeah. um and then we're both cat teams we're not that far away from each other geographically it, they don't play each other though. That's I know. Thing. If I was gonna say, if they were an NFC team, there probably would be more of a rivalry for sure. But I mean, both like, you know, when you they've been successful, they've been successful defensively. Mm -hmm. Very similar DNA with these two teams. But uh, all right, let's take a look at the injury reports, Jerry. Would you like to go over the Jacksonville Jaguars? Sure. I will go ahead and start. Trevor Lawrence is the only player not to practice. He has a right shoulder injury. That's the, honestly the key player yeah. here. Uh, oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> the limited practices go Tyson Campbell, Andre Sisco, Ezra Cleveland, uh, Zay Jones, Walker Little, Cam Robinson, Britton Strange. Uh Full practice, C.J. Beathard. I mean, I assume yeah. he's gonna play. Uh, yeah, but, he'll. Uh, yeah, B. Hart will play if if Lawrence can't for sure. Um, honestly, uh, it's it's the tre Trevor Lawrence. I mean, Zay Jones is something. Uh, you know, and he's Cam been, Robinson is something. It's just yeah, yeah. But know, obviously, Trevor Lawrence is the big is the big one. Um, you know, this team is. Under 500 in the United States. 
They were two and <laughs> one in London. And they that are, is I think, a fun six and seven. <laughs> yeah. I think they're six and seven in the US. So but they are fighting for a playoff spot. So let's go with the uh, Panthers injury report real quick. The DNPs are Troy Hill with a concussion and JC Horn with a toe. Ah. JC, come on. What do you think the chances are JC Horn plays in this game? Um I'm gonna say pretty good just for the simple fact that Yeah, he's he's it, DNP two days in a row now. <sighs> Crap, you're right. He's not gonna play. No, I think it's a zero percent chance he plays. Uh limited pra- limited practices here. Iki Iquanu with a foot. That's uh up from a DNP yesterday, so training in the right direction. Same with Luvu, the quad DNP yesterday, limited practice today. Uh Chuba with a hammy LP. Marquise Haynes and Taylor Moten both also listed as limited practice, but up from DNPs last uh, or yesterday. So good good job to see the progression there. Full practice, guys. Cade Mays, Miles Sanders, Tommy Trumbull, Chirellis, Stephen Sullivan, and Nash Jensen. So thank God Nash Jensen should be able to play. I, I wish he wouldn't. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was bad. He's he was awful. Yeah. He played like ten snaps and gave up two sacks. That guard spot, man, just not a lot of dude. Good Gabe Jackson, there this year. just just tuck him back in. Don't even mess with the rookie Nash Jensen. Get his yeah, butt I think beat I out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, God, I, the offensive line has just been that, that that guard position. I mean, the the tackles have been fine. Icky has been underwhelming but healthy, and then and, and he's getting been better healthy. now. It does seem to be better with this scheme. Uh, but the guards has just been a rotating list of shit. Like, it just nothing <laughs> is stuck. Nothing has been good. Well, There's there been went no our already. Flashes. <laughs> I think you can say, I think you can say, that's like, you know, PG-13. They say shit PG-13. Um, anyway, the guards the guards have just been terrible. We were, we were, like, cursed with guards. I mean, Corbett came back for a couple of games and then out again and uh christensen obviously got hurt early but yeah it, uh, it's it's crazy hang on, hang on how it is yeah after that brief interruption by a child uh yes the guards have been so awful this year that is one thing yeah. that this off season they're gonna have to deal with they're gonna have to go get better backups i mean kane mays is there i mean savala has looked absolutely savala horrendous. shouldn't be on the team next year like, yeah, they, they've got to either draft or bring some money in free agency. But, you know, you wonder if, if like last year, the, you know, offensive line as a whole got better as the year went on, right? Would that have happened this year had there been any kind of consistency? You know, I, I hope so. But hard to really not understand why this line has been so bad. Right, from the the bad scheme and then the health issues. Like, I think we're in for a better a better season next year from them. I do, I do too. I mean, they they have the talent. I mean, yeah. it, it's just you have to get into the right scheme for everything. Right. Yep. All right. Well, how are the Panthers going to win this game? Like, let's assume that Lawrence is going to play. Yeah. Let, let's for the purposes of this of this preview. Um, really it starts with keeping Bryce Young upright. Yeah. Like they did a decent job of that last week. He only got sacked twice, but you've got Allen and Trayvon Walker who are really good pass rushers. And you know, that it's not a slouch of an off or a defensive line there. So, uh, going to be incumbent upon the, you know, the outside of that offensive line to stay strong. Yeah. I mean, 100%. Not only that, part of this, part of the biggest problem I've noticed when Young gets hit is he, and this was kind of coming him out of college, is I remember even commenting on our draft profile that sometimes he holds on to the ball too long on his first read. That sometimes he needs to get it out a little bit quicker. And it's still a problem. I mean, there's sometimes where he does need to get it out quicker, whether that guy's open or not, he needs to get give them a chance. Right. Yeah. And, and that's something we saw last week. I think that 
he was doing more of the throwing NFL open rather than waiting for them to get college open, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that's a good thing that we're seeing. So, uh, what's our next key here? Uh, basically, we need to get to the quarterback, but especially Brian Burns. He, he's been so quiet for a while now. I mean, I didn't realize that five five games, one sack until I looked at it just on this podcast. I mean, especially if Lawrence can't go, let's be honest. Bethard is not going to be wowing you. They have weapons. I mean, Christian Kirk is on IR, but (coughs) Ridley, Zay Jones, um, Mm -hmm. why can I not think of their tight end? Yeah, ETN. Ingram. Ingram, thank you. Ingram's such a good tight end, too. Like, they have weapons. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and Beathard had, you know, times of success with San Francisco. And, uh, you know, he's not, you're not trotting out, you know, P.J. Walker. Yeah. You're, Although you're P.J. Out, Walker I, seems to win. <laughs> fairly, right. Yeah. Fa- a fairly, you know, mid-level, I would say, if not slightly higher backup quarterback. So, uh, it certainly would be a drop off, for yeah. sure, from Trevor Lawrence. But even a banged up Trevor Lawrence is, you know, that's that's a guy who's not going to want to run a lot, I would imagine. And a throwing shoulder that's injured, you know, maybe you'd rather face him. C- coming off a concussion, yeah. I mean, he he's got a lot of. Not only that, he's had a bad year, so. And when I say a bad year, bad year compared to what we expected, what the fans expected, you know, he took a his huge trage- leap. His trajectory has not been, it's, you know, it's been, and now you're. Yeah, the first year lot. I gave him a pass because that whole Urban Meyer was just awful. Yeah. That, Plus rookie, a yeah. rookie, you know, even the best rookies have rough rookie years. Yeah, but last year he looked really great year. like he was going to be that guy and this year yeah. not so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate um for them. I've been playing with the uh, Jags a lot on Madden <laughs> and they're the only team that I can find pretty consistent success with. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I they have um, a lot of they have weapons and they have some yeah. good defensive pieces. That secondary solid. Like they have a good yeah. secondary, good yeah. pass rushers. I mean, it should be a good test. Yeah, it, it will be, be a good test. Um, I would, I would, I want to see Chuba run. I want to see Chuba run for over a hundred. Me too. Uh, I'd love to see him somehow get past a thousand yards on the season. I think that would be a real testament to the power of having that, you know, that type of focus. On offense. Yeah. And a real kind of F you to Frank Reich, I think, as well. Yeah, I don't... Honestly. I don't understand why he just refused to run him. I mean... Well, yeah. That's just... He, that's not what he wanted his team. He does not want his team to be a runner, a running team. He said he, that. he They do, do not want to be a power running team. That is not what he wants. But Jacksonville gives up to 101 <clears throat> yards per game on average. 134 <clears throat> in the last three. So there is a possibility okay. that he could get over that. And it also helped keep off those pass rushers from pitting their ears back for Bryce. I don't care if we're down right. 10, two touchdowns. Continue to run the ball, guys. Like, let's not get yeah. Bryce in a bad situation. Yeah. yeah uh, give me at least 10 runs in the first half, right? Give me a couple of runs on first down. Like, uh, mix it up a little bit, but be, uh, you know, be mindful. Mindful, that's not what I want to say, but, you know, have that as an objective, right? Run the ball. Run the and ball. Don't, don't move away from it. Run the ball. All right. Uh, any other kind of final thoughts before we get into predictions? Um, just with that, be mindful that they do have a pass rush that can destroy Bryce Young, can destroy this O-line <laughs> without. So let's be yeah. smart with it. Let's do a couple screens. Let's do, you know, run plays. Let's, you know, do the, you know, Amir Smith Marset plays. Let's let's try to work that. Then you could take your shots downfield, not on first, not on the first drive, second down, and one. No, let's let's keep the change smooth. Let Bryce get into a rhythm. Yeah, yep, agreed. Okay, 
Bold prediction time. Jerry, mm-hmm. as always, please go first. Ugh. I am going to say with this game, we're going to have a breakout game. Actually, I can't say that because he broke out last week. I'm going to say four touchdown Bryce Young. That would be a breakout game. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just yeah. saying that's my bold predictions for four touchdowns. Four touchdowns. All right, that would be great. Uh, I'm going to go the Chuba route, I think, this week. I think he's going to rush for 150 yards. I would love that. Yeah. I want to see I want to see him go for it cuz that would leave him with like 80 yards left, 75 yards would, left. And, and I'm pretty sure this coaching staff would let him get it. Would try to get Oh him. yeah, for sure. I mean, what else do you I mean, number one is just a good idea to, you know, to let him run the ball. Well, but yeah. number two, you know, it's an accomplishment and you take those at this point of the season. And, and players respect coaches who let yeah. them do that. Right. Yep. All right, game predictions here. Unfortunately, um, you know, it's actually hard because if Trevor Lawrence doesn't play, then I think there's a decent chance the Panthers can be competitive in this game. I'm going to assume that Trevor Lawrence is going to play and, uh, you know, is going to be healthy enough to be Trevor Lawrence. And I'll say Jags win 30-24. I am going to go Jags 23-20. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we both keep up our tradition of picking against the Panthers, and we'll see if that <laughs> works out this time or not. So. All right, Jerry. Well, we want to thank everyone for listening. If you like the show, please let your friends know. Please follow us on Twitter at Mix Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. If you leave us a five-star review with a comment on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it on the show. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. We will most likely be back uh, <laughs> next Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, we might be back earlier than that. We'll see what happens. But until then, everybody stay safe out there. Have a happy new year. Happy new year. And keep pounding.